That's good. Pin top foot, because a pin top foot has got little tiny channels, and you can use my cord. You can use coordinate. <coughs> I prefer to use DMC tatting floss, which is thicker. Do we have that without a machine, or we have to buy that? Um, this one is usually bought, but in this case, I'm going to make it double just so that it's a little thicker. But this, oh, we're talking about the teeny tiny little. What you little call it? DMC. DMC tatting floss. The really or pearl rayon, pearl cotton. You can use this pearl rayon as long as it's thick enough. But you want it to be thicker than this. This is a little bit too small, so I'll probably, I'll twist it. So I'm going to put this on the machine. Okay. First I'm going to make the cording out of this blue fabric so it can be seen. And it's just a little tiny strip. And we, this actually doesn't really matter if it's bias, it's so small. And I'm going to First thing I want to do is because this foot does not have a slot, you have it, it'll jam. So the first thing I want to do is get my threads underneath the foot. So I'm going to take one stitch and pull it through. So now my threads are under the foot. And I'm going to use a regular straight stitch. And I'm going to set that stitch just to the left of center or just to the right of center and how I know where it's going to go is I'm going to take these threads because I'm going to use this as my cording in the center just like we did on the embroidery uh, on the uh, serger and I'm going to set Set that cording into one of these grooves. And I want the needle just to the right of that groove. This looks small. Twist it to get it to behave like one piece. We learned this at one of the Ricky Tim seminars, his super seminar that we did. And I um, I have it on the uh, uh, quilt out in, on the floor that shows the teeny tiny piping. <coughs> so now I've created tiny sixteenth of an inch wide piping. And you did that in the center of the foot? And I did in the center so that the cording rides underneath of one of the, the grooves. Okay. And then when I put it together, and I would do it, I usually do it with my bindings for my quilt. Pretend that's a binding. And then I'm going to lay that groove, of that cording in the same groove that it was in. I like to use the center one. You can use any of the grooves, but I like the center one just because I can see it in the center. And now when I run this into that groove again, it stays even and look how perfect that is. See how perfect? It's very difficult to get if you miss on something this small by even one thread, you can really see it. But having that cording makes that that edge stay inside the track and it stays perfectly even. And this is how you do that. And if this were my binding, see there's the binding to my quilt. It's one of my, one of my favorite ways to put in an edge. This works great on collars. It works great on, the, on jacket edges. On the on if you're hemming something, it looks very tailored and very very crisp. It's really pretty. Oh, I love this stitch. And you remember, if you have the Imagine Wave or the Evolve or the Evolution, then you can also make your own piping out of that wave stitch, and it makes the tiny piping already this width, and use that inside of you and then it looks like it's got stripes. It's really interesting. Any questions?
And then cut them into little strips. And that way it becomes, then it looks like you've got that inside of the cut. Again, but when you're using the wave rolled, the rolled wave edge, not the regular wave, but the rolled wave, it's this thick. And then you use it, use it with the pin tuck, with this pin tuck foot. And it works really well. This is one of these feet I do use. <laughs> I have a lot of feet that I don't use. This is one I do use all the time. Okay. And I like this one. <laughs>